Hello everyone. It's um, about time that somebody that knew what they were talking about commented on this um, Nabiru subject and on the subject of the ancient Baal gods and the more recent in um, input of the Elohim gods and basically explains to hopefully so that simple people can understand what's really going on. Bear with me, uh, I might not speak very good but I do know what I'm talking about. I'll have to give you some history. It seems as though humanity was indeed created kind of illegally by the anarchy as slaves, for want of a better better um, word for it, to mine gold for them, basically, and probably to supply their food. Where did these anarchy gods come from? It says in the scripture that they were put down here upon earth as a sort of a uh, prison. Now, whether or not they came from uh, the planet Nibiru, I don't actually know. It does seem as though such a thing exists, because if you go back to the... It does seem about every 3,600 years some pretty amazing things happen. And there'd have to be a cause, and I've never been one to believe in magic gods. You know, I, I believe that the the gods are extraterrestrial beings with high technology. I don't believe for a second that they're magic, although sometimes they probably could use their knowledge to achieve what looks to be like miracles, like the healing of Christ, when Christ did the healings and when he raised people from death. That's probably science could have been miracles. I, I don't know myself. I, I don't really care. He did them. And if he came back today, he'd probably do them again. Anyway, I don't want to sidetrack too much. These these beings that they call Anaki, or the Baal, or Enu, or Lucifer, they were placed upon this earth, and maybe placed upon Nibiru, uh, because they're criminals. They were murderers, liars, and thieves from elsewhere in the galaxy. They were placed here without star travel. Now they might be able to travel from Nibiru to here and back and forward and back and forward and back and to Mars and to anywhere else with the technology they've got, but they don't have star travel. Most of the, uh, the records speak of them having vehicles that had jet engines. Nearly all of the, the Sumerian and, and the biblical accounts even speak of them having uh, like not so much uh, uh, anti-gravity but literal jet engines. Now that's so old tech. <coughs> now these things, these, these beings were physical beings. Now, we've been taught to think of gods as being spirit only. It's a Gnos called Gnostic dualism. We've been taught to think that gods were spirit only and that they were thrown down to the material world or that we indeed, as humans, we fell after Eden. We fell down to the material world. That is a lie. There's nothing wrong with the material world. They, I I there's nothing wrong with it at all. It just so happens that on this planet we are basically captive to uh, criminals. As to why that's the case, there is quite a possibility that most of us humans were among that one third that of heaven that were thrown down to earth after a war. It's quite possible we were part of the criminal element us humans, you know, we, we're being given a chance to repent and to show faith and to show love and to gain salvation. 
Now the way we gain that salvation is to believe, trust in, cling to and rely upon Christ. The, Lord, the one Lord of all Elohim Lords incarnated into Christ. The being called Gabriel came down, took some of, to fulfill the promise to Abraham, took some of uh, Joseph's semen, Mary's eggs, took it back up into the orbiting eternal city, which is a genuine star travel vehicle. I'll explain more the difference between star travel and space travel. It's a genuine star travel vehicle. The book of Revelation says it's 1,600 miles by 1,600 miles by 1,600 miles, and it's in the shape of a pyramid. It's in that shape because, um, uh, because it's the best shape to build and to extend onto the bottom without changing the... Uh, the, the angles without putting new engines in they can just extend with the same angles that's why that's done anyway as I was saying the the uh, the genuine city of the Elohim is a genuine star travel vehicle now it's not enough just to get up to an incredible speed so that you don't you know waste 5,000 years getting where you're going because you might run into a black hole or an asteroid or um, a star or a planet or whatever it might be in your way. So there's much more to space travel than just getting up to an incredibly high speed. But these Elohim beings, they sent Gabriel down. He came down, got some of Joseph's seed and Mary's eggs, took them back up into the orbiting eternal city, which was the star the wi three wise men saw. It was the sunlight reflecting off of its hull. Took him up there, and in front of the one Lord of all of the other Elohim, they created the little blastocyst of the Christ, and he projected his own heart and his own spirit. The one Lord of all of the Elohim projected his own heart and spirit into the little Christ. And Gabriel then took him back down to earth and through a bit of keyhole surgery the, the the little embryo was placed into Mary's womb and I strongly suggest Gabriel hung around too afterwards just to talk to the little Christ and to make sure that he felt at ease and comfortable with himself because it does say while thou wast in the womb I knew thee and children are capable of communing spiritually a couple of months before they're born at least possibly as much as five months before they're born, if not more. Anyway, this was how the Christ was created in his virgin birth. It was definitely one of the Elohim beings incarnating into Christ. And now they can tell whether these anyone is willing to submit to the, to the authority of the one Lord of all the other Elohim lords, and to be part of their, their loving, faithful community. Anyone that doesn't want to submit to Christ doesn't want to submit to the spirit of the Elohim Lord within him. And that's how they know the difference between those who are satanic and those who are faithful. All who are faithful will come to Christ and they'll come to Christ because they love the Father within him. Those who hate the Father within him well, they're not going to come anywhere near Christ. They'll hate him, irrationally, which is still the case. This is going to take a while. Uh, I guess you could call this part one. I'll be back.